<laughs> Piers, is it, is it safe to say that City have showed a remarkable strengthening since that particular weakness? <laughs> uh, actually, I, I tell you what, listening to that was quite interesting because I genuinely did believe what I was saying. Hmm. And the truth is that I'm afraid, <clears throat> I don't care what Arsenal fans who are trying to justify this or excuse it. And I've heard all the stuff, you know, we're the youngest squad along with Southampton, who, by the way, got relegated. So why boast about having the youngest squad? Um, you know, that we, we we got tired, even though we were playing one tournament, a city were in everything. It's like, really? Tiredness? Um, I've heard all the excuses. The truth is, we bottled it. There's no other way to describe what has happened in the last few weeks. We were eight points clear. We had eight games to go. Actually, we should have won the league. And I will always believe that. And this might be the best chance we get, by the way, because I think, uh, as I've been listening to your show this morning, a lot of teams are going to be strengthening. And they already are. You can see Liverpool improving yep. by, the, by the minute. So I think next season will be ferociously competitive. There could be seven or eight teams competing for that top four. And this was our chance, you know. And I just think that Arsenal, I don't know what it was, but that performance against Brighton was absolutely pathetic. I'm sorry, you're chasing for the title, even if you've got a tiny sniff of the title, and you do that at home to Brighton, who just got beaten 5-1 at home by Everton. I thought it was truly pathetic. So, yes, we've had a, a, a fantastically good season right to this point uh, of about four or five weeks ago. Yes, we were filled with hope. Yes, we've come on a long way since this time last year, when, frankly, I would have... Uh, got rid of Arteta because we'd had two very you know lean seasons with him in charge, and I've I've admitted my my error on that. But and it's a big but. You cannot bottle the league in the way we've just done, and I'm afraid that's what we did. And it's, it may sound harsh, and I don't mean to be harsh to the players. I'm sure they've all got their reasons. But that performance on uh, at the weekend was one of the worst I've seen, given the context, as an Arsenal fan ever. I actually agree with that performance. I I I felt like I it hurts me sometimes to agree with you peers on these kind of things, but actually it did because I I watched it and I thought, "Come on guys, like just because I I felt like they'd seen the Man City result and they'd gone, "Right, that's it." But it's just one of those things that you just never know. And and understandably, but by the way, but by the way, Laura, go and do it. Hmm? Right, but how pathetic to have, to take your your psychological lead from watching Manchester City be mm. Everton. I mean, how pathetic. And mm. yeah, I thought I it was also pathetic. I also, I was really, really disheartened to see so many Arsenal fans leaving with like 10 mm. minutes to go. Yeah. It's like, really? <laughs> I mean, I've never done that. <laughs> right? you... So Arsenal fans say to me, oh, you're a plastic fan, you're not a river. I certainly wouldn't have left a game of that magnitude with 10 minutes to go. So, yeah. you know, it looked to me like everybody gave up. The players gave up. Uh, the fans gave up. And, and what a time to throw the towel in. Right? Like... You know, you think that, <clears throat> I, saw Ray, I saw Ray Parler as, uh, after the game. And we were talking about it. And he did say that the only upside was that Spurs are still, and I won't repeat the word, but I think every Arsenal fan knows what he would have said. Um, <laughs> but, but we were just talking about that he couldn't understand the mentality. And, you know, he was trying to find reasons for it. But Ray Parler would never have given up, ever, in that situation. Those teams that won the, won the titles under Wenger, or George Graham. You think any of those teams would have played the way we did at the weekend? Right, we're, we looking, had, we were, we're looking for, for reasons. Title? We're looking for reasons. I want to ask you two of you a question, right? And I'm mm. just asking, I'm throwing it out there. How significant is the deterioration in results and form due to you missing the big centre-back? Yeah, listen, Saliba <laughs> is a great... I, I honestly think he's going to be a great, great player. And I don't use that, that phrase uh, advisedly. He's a proper, proper footballer. But the idea that our whole season rested on whether Saliba was fit or not, I think is for the birds. We were conceding... I saw Jamie Carragher analysing it. We were conceding a lot of goals with Saliba at centre-back. And we've conceded too many goals this season. I think the defence has been pretty rocky, actually, for a lot of the season. That's been a problem. But I also think... I saw Patrick Vieira, and he, if anyone knows knows he knows that we don't have a physical leader we've got a yep. brilliant technical leader in Odegaard and I think he's been brilliant this season and I like his leadership but we need a big bustling midfield general someone like Declan Rice would be fantastic but I looked at that Brighton team I, I would take two or three of that team you know I thought uh, Casado was you already absolutely... have well yeah but I would take yeah. more I thought Casado was brilliant I thought um I thought Mittemar was fantastic yeah you know and but but what I couldn't understand Ellie how did Brighton run us ragged for the, for 90 minutes? How is it that a team that is in their position in the league <clears throat> can run ragged in our stadium when we are chasing the title in that in that way? It was honestly embarrassing. 
And I just think the way that we've gone about our business in the in the business end of the season, 2-0 up against West Ham and we don't win. 2-0 up against Liverpool and we don't win. We don't even turn up at Manchester City. We get stuffed at home by Brighton. We go 2-0 down in 10 minutes to Southampton, who were the worst team in the league. It's like, really? Really? This was it. We had a chance to win the title. So, yes, I'm going to praise the team for coming on so brilliantly since last season. This time last year, it was awful. And we've come on such a long way. And credit to Arteta, credit to the players. But the last few weeks have been incredibly disappointing. Yeah, um, we would love to have you on for longer periods, but we've got to go. We've got to go to a break. I'm sure you've got I'm a busy day. Quite ple- I'm actually quite pleased. I, <laughs> I've got I no honestly more clips can't do sleeve. much. I can't do much more of this hand wringing. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, but I would say to this to Cronky, I saw Josh Cronky uh, as he sloped out afterwards. Get your checkbook out. We need a proper striker. We need to sign Rice and Casado, and we need to really get stuck into at least one more centre back, and we need to compete with these big teams and stop making excuses. Mm. It's not about their age. It's not about their inexperience. It's not about any of it. It's about bottle. And we need players you've got bottle. Thank you and good night. <laughs> <laughs> Talk TV host, Piers Morgan Have there. A good day. He's back on the air tonight. Um, you can watch him in all the usual places. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.